Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another one of those examples that when we think ahead, we can simplify things very quickly. Notice we have an x on the numerator and the denominator, so we have a y and as well a z. And we have positive and negative exponents. Now realize that here we have a negative 4 and a positive 3, so when I bring the x to the negative 4 up, I end up with x to a positive exponent. If I bring the y to the negative 1 down, I end up with a y to a positive exponent. And if I bring z to the negative 2 down, then I also end up with z to a positive exponent. So we can very quickly decide which ones to move up and down to make things a lot simpler for us. So this then becomes as follows. We want x to the numerator, so this becomes x to the 3 plus, or a negative negative 4, that becomes a plus 4. Here we have a y to the 2 plus 1, because when we bring the negative 1 down, it becomes a positive 1. The negative 4 up becomes a positive 4. And here we have a z to the negative 1, but when we bring the negative 2 down, it becomes a plus 2. And notice, oh, we can't forget the negative 5 up there. So notice when we simplify that, the following happens. This is equal to x to the 7th divided by y to the 3rd and z to the first power, all to the negative 5 power. And then, of course, to get rid of that negative on the negative 5, we simply flip everything over. So this is equal to y cubed, z divided by x to the 7th power, all raised to the positive 5 power, simply by flipping the fraction over. And then we apply the exponent. When the exponent is raised to the exponent, we multiply. So this becomes y to the 15th power, z to the 5th power, divided by x to the 35th power, and that will then be the reduced form of our original equation. Notice again, let's think ahead, let's find out where we end up with a positive exponent by moving the other exponent up or down, and then we can very quickly get the final result, and that is how it's done.